Mark Marquez's ultimate objective is to equal the number of championships that his rival Valentino Rossi has won. Only one title separates eight-time world champion and six-time MotoGP champion Marquez from the record set by the great Rossi. This year, he switched to Ducati so that he could compete with Rossi. This season, Zarco traded in his Pramac Ducati for an LCR Honda, going from the greatest bike on the grid the year before to the worst, but he benefited from the longer contract. Marquez took the opposite action, leaving Repsol Honda after a lengthy relationship and making his debut with Grassini Ducati. Welcome to Bike GP. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon for more updates. Texas has historically been dominated by Marquez, while Bastianini has also had success. MotoGP champion Pecco may need to grind out a result over the course of the next few days in trying conditions before moving on to circuits that could work in his favor rather than against his competitors. Ducati has given Pramac until a certain date to finalize their new contract. The Italian MotoGP is held on June 2nd, and that is the deadline for the satellite team to announce their decision to stay with the manufacturer for 2025 and 2026. As their agreement approaches its conclusion, Pramac and Ducati are talking about extending their cooperation. There were rumors that the use of factory bikes by Pramac and Ducati was a potential point of contention in their discussions. According to reports, Aprilia made Fabio Quartararo an opportunity to quit Yamaha. However, the 2021 MotoGP champion chose to ignore it and signed a new two-year contract with Yamaha instead. With a new contract worth 12 million euros a year, he is now the highest paid rider in the MotoGP. Quartararo received an agreement from Aprilia valued just 4 million euros annually. Quartararo decided to remain where he was at the mere 33% of the contract value that Yamaha was offering. When Aprilia began negotiating with Quartararo on his future a few months ago, they were aware that they would never be able to match Yamaha financially. However, they were hoping that the RSGP's competitiveness would entice him to choose the same course of action as Marc Marquez. Marquez chose to leave his 20 million euros a year Honda contract, which made him the highest paid rider in MotoGP, in favor of a more competitive package from Grassini Ducati. In 2024, Aprilia also set out to become the most competitive rival to Ducati. Brad Binder of KTM is presently second in the standings, but Maverick Vinales' victory in the Portimao sprint race gave an idea of what Aprilia was capable of. Regretfully, his gearbox failure the next day revealed the Aprilia's other side. Other manufacturers were unable to match Yamaha's offer for Quartararo with any seriousness. Francesco Bagnaia has already signed a contract with Ducati worth a minimum of 6 million euros annually. They are also considering whether to fit in and how to finance Marquez and Jorge Martin's futures. Quartararo would therefore have to accept the financial and technological setbacks that accompany being a member of a Ducati satellite squad. Pedro Acosta's progression is a top priority for KTM, who already have the fast-moving bender. They will have to pay for this because they are also said to be interested in signing Marquez for the next season. How about Honda? Their bike is currently even poorer than Yamaha's, despite their financial might. Quartararo chose to endure while assisting in the development of the Yamaha for however long it needed and to become the highest paid MotoGP rider. Two elite riders and two satellite teams are named by Yamaha as their targets for 2025, currently fielding just two bikes on the MotoGP grid belonging to Fabio Quartararo and Alex Rins, the struggling Japanese manufacturer intends to increase their presence. Their goal of keeping star player Quartararo has been accomplished, and they have a notebook full of other goals for the upcoming season. Pramac did not refuse a chat with Yamaha regarding their future plans. Even though Pramac and Ducati are nearing the conclusion of their contract, team manager Gino Borsoi is adamant that they have the option to automatically prolong their cooperation for an additional two years. However, no contract has been signed despite having access to the greatest bike in the sport. Even if joining Yamaha would mean a drop in competitiveness, Pramac might find the financial package to be alluring. The other team in negotiations to join Yamaha as a satellite team is still VR46. Ducati is currently using year-old equipment, and VR46 is debating whether to stay longer or look for fresh pastures. Uchio Salucci of VR46 openly expressed his desire to rejoin Ducati prior to the season's opening round in Qatar, but that didn't work out. 
Valentino Rossi, the team owner, continues to represent Yamaha as a brand ambassador after enjoying his heyday with the Japanese company. Now that Quartararo has committed to riding one of their bikes in 2024, Yamaha is keeping a watch on the rider market. On their list is Jorge Martin. He has vowed to leave the manufacturer if he does not receive his demand for a promotion to the factory Ducati team. So Yamaha is watching intently, wanting to see what Martin will do. But with the significant expense to lock down Quartararo, any swoops may now depend on finances. Yamaha is also interested in Enea Bastianini. If Martin gets his wish and gets promoted to the factory Ducati squad, Bastianini will miss out on a gig. Ducati and Yamaha are said to have had early meetings in Portimao. However, Ducati is aware that they presently control the rider market. However, Yamaha is poised and ready to strike. Massimo Rivola, CEO of Aprilia, had stated that their bike's development was the company's top priority and that we are not sleeping regarding the rider market. According to his theory, highlighting the package's competitiveness will draw the greatest riders. Interestingly, Quartararo's comments prior to committing to Yamaha did not align with Aprilia CEO Rivola's claim that they would take time to evaluate their rider alternatives for 2025. The Yamaha racer acknowledged in the open that he wants to decide on next year quickly. Now that he has, Aprilia is left without a significant alternative as he has signed an extension with his present squad. The way Aprilia plans to proceed may be determined by how competitive their bike is in the upcoming rounds. The factory riders for Aprilia are Esper Gro and Maverick Vinales, who won the sprint race at the Portuguese MotoGP. Trackhouse, a satellite team, fields Miguel Oliveira and Raul Fernandez on motorcycles that are nearly identical to factory specs. At 34, Esper Gro is currently the oldest rider on the grid. Though he has frequently hinted at retiring, Aprilia may give him a new one-year contract if his performance warrants it and his circumstances improve. In Portugal, veteran rider Vinales made history by being the first rider to win a race for three separate manufacturers, though the record books will likely indicate otherwise given it was a sprint. Nevertheless, it served as a timely reminder of Vinales' ability during a period when his squad and Quartararo were closely associated. Which riders might be available if they wanted to take a stab at the pandemonium of the silly season? Due to the costs incurred in retaining Quartararo, Yamaha may be unable to make a significant offer for Bastianini or Martin, which would allow Aprilia to take over. In the past, Aprilia's Rivola has expressed interest in signing an Italian rider. Perhaps Marco Bezzecchi offers yet another chance to do so. The VR46 rider might get his first factory opportunity from Aprilia. Given that Aprilia has Trackhouse, they may consider American alternatives. The obvious choice is Moto2 prodigy Joe Roberts. However, it is more likely that he will be for Trackhouse than the factory Aprilia setup. What are your thoughts? Let us know in the comment down below and don't forget to like and subscribe for new upcoming videos of MotoGP. Thanks for watching!